Hello and welcome to our all new download, bringing you the latest in Catholic news and discussion. I'm Christine Niles. Also here today with us is Stephen Wynn. Hi Stephen. Hello. And on the panel is one of our new producers, Paul Morano. Hey Paul. Howdy. As you've probably figured out by now, there's a glut of news and what we do on the download is try to get you up to speed on as much as we can. And then importantly, help you see how all these various events are interrelated, kind of connecting the dots as they call it. We begin each show with a few headlines from the day to get you up to speed. So here are today's. A bishop censors his priest, a gay priest goes to jail, and Nancy backtracks, kind of. Steve. Thanks, Christine. A Virginia bishop is continuing his gag order on a faithful priest. The priest got in trouble last year with his bishop, Barry Nest out of Richmond, for publicly criticizing the way the church has handled the McCarrick case. He noted the Vatican has so far refused to disclose those complicit in his abuse. That caused Nestout to tell him to shut it all down, leading critics to wonder why Nestout is so intent on silencing a priest who's simply asking questions. A gay, a gay Detroit priest will be cooling his jets in jail for exposing himself. Father Larry Ventline was sentenced yesterday to 10 days behind bars after he was caught exposing his genitals in an area bakery. Fentline was previously accused of raping an 11-year-old boy, a charge he denies. A longtime member of Detroit's homosexual network, Ventline opened up a gay massage parlor in his condo, reportedly worked as a gay prostitute, and frequented gay bars in Windsor, Canada. He was allowed to exercise public ministry by Vigneron up to as recently as 2016. And after intense backlash, Speaker of the House Nancy Pelosi is honoring Tuskegee Airmen after she ripped up Trump's State of the Union speech Tuesday night, which in part honored them. The Tuskegee Airmen bravely fought enemies abroad and racism at home, Pelosi wrote in a tweet yesterday, trying to salvage her reputation after she was blasted for tearing up a speech that honored 100-year-old General Charles McGee, a veteran of the pioneering black fighter pilots. Pelosi continues to justify her act of disrespect, claiming every page of Trump's speech contained lies. So completely disingenuous, yeah. uh, you know, uh, she, she, she's surely not pandering to African-American voters by, uh, by, re oh, by apologizing. No, 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 no. Yeah, she continues to put up this front that, you know, justifying mm. this act of disrespect. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah. it's clear she's received all sorts of backlash for this. I don't yeah. think she thought this through. <laughs> when, when she ripped up that uh, speech. No, but yeah. we do know that it was premeditated. Yeah. I mean, we know that, that she lied because she says, oh, no, it was a spontaneous, spontaneous thing, but there's actually yeah. video and, and, you know, it's all over social media now where it shows her actually before the talk, she takes the yeah. sheet that she kind of goes like, it's a little tearing oh, just to make sure it works. It, as if she's yeah. hiding then, from America with all those, <laughs> exactly. with all those cameras so on she, her. She's all ready. But yeah. going back to the Larry Ventline case, yeah. okay, this highlights what is wrong with the Detroit Archdiocese. Right. This man, yeah. as you said, he opened a gay massage parlor in his condo. He worked as a gay prostitute. Right. Um, you know, he's got a counseling license to help counsel uh, teens, whatever. <laughs> and he wasn't even restricted from ministry until mm -hmm. 2016. It was only a partial restriction. The guy's not even laicized right. yet. And yet compare the way he's been treated by the Detroit Archdiocese with like, Father Edward Perrone. Yeah. I mean, this man did Literally, he did nothing. It was a fabricated rape charge, and now he's, he's out. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, Ventline's actually behind bars now. Mm -hmm. yeah. but, yep. it's, it's baffling. I, I don't understand the, the, uh, the um, you know, why there's such a dichotomy there between, you know, relatively honest priests and those who, uh, you know, are complicit in all this uh, disgusting behavior. Well, I it's, it's the corrupt gay mafia that, that Vigano was talking about. I mean, he's the one who came out and said, there is a corrupt oh. gay mafia that has a stranglehold in the highest, you know, right, uh, right. hierarchy in the church. And, 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 and this, uh, mm. uh, Ventline was a close aide of, of um, uh, Archbishop Vigneron. And he's, he's one of the most well-known priests in, in the entire diocese. And the fact that I mean, he's been allowed to. It's just, it's a, yeah, this well, was in 2001 when he was outed as, as you know, being a gay prostitute, yeah. all this kind of stuff. Years, years left in. Well, uh, if Vigneron is complaining about a gay mafia and he knows about this priest, I mean, put two and two together there, no? Yeah, Why yeah. doesn't he do something yeah. about it? Yeah, exactly. And then um, also the Bishop Nestout case, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. very few people are reporting on. So just, you know, Father Mark White had a blog, a very faithful priest in Rocky Mount. And um, he started criticizing the way the church handled the whole McCarrick case. Mm -hmm. and he was very mm. critical. I mean, you know, he never crossed the line, but he right. basically said on his blog, hey, there are bishops who are complicit in covering up for McCarrick. 
why aren't we hearing about this? Where's the Vatican investigation on this? And then as Bishop Nesta cracks down on him and orders him to shut it down. Mm -hmm. and, and so, and, uh, and remember, Nesta was, he, he was a guy in hot water, at least among uh, Richmond Catholics later, or, or just recently. He, uh, was, he basically gave approval for a, an Episcopalian female priest uh, to be consecrated bishop inside a Catholic church yeah. in, in Richmond. Yeah. And, uh, you know, of course, thankfully, that outraged uh, local Catholics and they, uh, they they pushed back. She was the one mm. who ended up canceling it, not not Nest out. She said, oh, because of the controversy, I'm gonna be moving this to a, to a different location. Nest out actually came out and said, oh, I'm so sad that this happened. Just, I don't know, once things are rotten in the, in the city of Virginia. Yeah, one should never be disciplined for just asking questions. Mm -hmm. yeah, just absolutely. asking questions. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's today's headlines recap. We're going to take a small break and get ready for our main discussion, the uproar and fallout over God and politics. Don't go away. We'll be right back. The peasant Catholics can no longer trust the Church of Nice establishment media. Get daily updates and become the informed Catholic you need to be. Download the all new Church Milton app from Google Play or the Apple App Store. Older Americans often remark on how much things have changed in the U.S., things they almost never heard of when they were young. Homosexuality, abortion, transgenderism, hardcore pornography, they're now just a normal part of life for many people. With recent polls showing more and more people abandoning Christianity, it's easy to see the problem is an epidemic. President Trump has been making great efforts towards religious liberty, and he's been doing what he can to reverse a trend that seems all but out of control. With more on that, here's Church Militant's Brad Eli. Americans are at a crossroads regarding the state of Christianity in America. We do not consider ourselves a Christian nation or a Jewish nation or a Muslim nation. Uh, we consider ourselves uh, a nation of citizens who are uh, bound by ideals and a set of values. Since Obama's efforts to secularize the U.S. and attack Christian morality, President Donald Trump has worked to restore what's been taken away. This afternoon, we're proudly announcing historic steps to protect the First Amendment right to pray in public schools. He's made big efforts to bring God back to a nation that's banishing him more and more from public life. On Tuesday, at his historic State of the Union address, he reiterated his administration's efforts to bring God back to the public square. In America, we don't punish prayer. We don't tear down crosses. We don't ban symbols of faith. We don't muzzle preachers and pastors. In America, we celebrate faith. We cherish religion. We lift our voices in prayer, and we raise our sights to the glory of God and despite heavy resistance from Democrats, people with Judeo-Christian morals are able to exercise their beliefs in public. But voters will have to decide in November if they will side with the Democrats to push God away or join in with President Trump to ask for his blessing. Brad Eli, Church Militant, Detroit. Well, as you know, the um, 68th annual National Prayer Breakfast occurred yesterday. And, um, you know, President Trump was with a, with a hoarse voice, voice, he was certainly uh, on his game in various respects we're going to talk about. But, um, you know, religious liberty, um, a whole bunch of stuff. But, uh, well, why don't we just listen to a few words that President Trump did have to say at yesterday's prayer breakfast. As I said on Tuesday in the House chamber, in America, we don't punish prayer. We don't tear down crosses. We don't ban symbols of faith. We don't muzzle preachers. We don't muzzle pastors. In America, we celebrate faith. We cherish religion. We lift our voices in prayer. And we raise our sights to the glory of God. Well, there you go. Um, Amen. Our <laughs> preacher in chief, uh, <laughs> Donald Trump. It's amazing how, uh, how much for religious liberty and life Donald Trump has been in the past three years. I don't know if you guys remember, but in the 1990s, uh, Mother Teresa highlighted the National Prayer Breakfast. Do you remember that? And the Clintons were squirming oh, yes. because she was talking about abortion and, mm -hmm. and the right to life. Uh, well, President Trump spoke about that a lot and uh, talked about religious liberty, which is freedom of religion. 
And of course, that goes, that goes back to our First Amendment, which, uh, if I just may read, Congress may, um, shall pass no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof. Now, all President Trump here is saying, and I think any originalist that reads the Constitution understands that the intent of the found, Founding Fathers was not to separate God from religion, but to separate uh, a religious domination from the state, excuse me, God from the state, uh, because, of course, where they came from. Religious denominations, you know, if the king was Protestant, you know, everybody had to be Protestants or you died. So it was to protect religion uh, from the state. Um, and so, hence, we have freedom of religion and we should exercise that freely. Yeah, absolutely. And one of the things that he brought up at uh, the prayer breakfast as well yeah. is protecting prayer in public schools. This is so crucial because if you look back at the history of the Supreme Court rulings, they have been sort of slowly rolling back and rolling back and rolling back the ability to pray in public schools. Just a very quick recap, in 1962, you had the case Engel v. Vitale, where the Supreme Court said for the first time that state officials were not allowed to compose official school prayers and then sort of play them over the loudspeaker at the beginning of the day where right. students would take part. Now, this was even in, in the cases of where students were allowed to excuse themselves. They could be quiet, they could leave the room. Mm. Even there, the Supreme Court said, right. nope, can't do it. It can't come from an official. Um, and then in 1963, Abington School District, um, the public schools could no longer sponsor any sort of Bible reading. So now you've got the Bible taken out, and then you have you know, further cases after that, no, no longer allowing uh, clergymen to offer invocations at graduations, and then football games. Yeah. And so you can see One these things rolling another. after. Yeah, but, but this is really important. So um, Trump, on January 16th, actually um, made an official announcement saying, I am going to start issuing regulations that are going to protect students' First Amendment right to pray in public schools because this is sort of the, the linchpin of confusion in public schools today is because the teachers don't seem to understand. They're the ones who can't impose prayer on students. Students can do whatever they want. Students have the First Amendment right to mm. pray anywhere they want. They can pray you know, in school. They can gather a group of students to pray in school if they want. But too many times, students, uh, teachers are cracking down saying, oh, you can't do that. That's not true, and that's something that Trump is trying to address. And, you know, it's thank God that he's the man who was elected in mm -hmm. 2016. Because can you imagine oh. the alternative? President Hillary. Hillary. Right. Hillary is the one who wanted to basically send people like us to re-education. Yes. Uh, you know, yeah. To, yeah. Exactly. yeah. No. I mean, so. The bakers, the florists, who down the line. Who to participate mm -hmm. in yeah. gay marriage. Right. I mean, that's still a huge threat. Right. And there's right. not a single Democrat candidate today that you look at today who would not want to punish us for our Absolutely. beliefs for not promoting the LGBT yeah, cause. Yeah. So the stakes are very high. Yeah, yeah. Well, like you said, uh, you mentioned uh, every education camps. Remember recently, uh, Project Veritas released undercover videos of multiple staffers, uh, Ber Bernie uh, Sanders campaign staffers, yeah. who literally <laughs> were advocating for that, saying, oh, praising the Soviet Gulag system and saying uh, Trump supporters should be uh, shipped off there for re-education. Uh, you know, a a another thing that uh, really stood out to me uh, f uh, during the, uh, um, the National Prayer address was Trump the fact that Trump really called out the hypocrisy of Democrats mm. uh, you know he, 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 there, he there was a good mix of gravity and levity uh, in his speech and he was very serious at, at times but he also laughed at himself and the attempts by Democrats and one Republican to uh, to impeach him at the outset Trump said he specifically referenced uh, Mitt Romney and Nancy Pelosi pointing out just again their utter hypocrisy in touting their religious faith uh, as a cover for essentially doing evil uh, you know, he started by saying that his family, uh, he, his family, and the whole country have been through a terrible ordeal and uh, perpetrated, really, what he, as he described, by some very dishonest and corrupt people. He added this. He said, they know what they are doing is wrong, but they put themselves far ahead of our great country. And, and he's so true. It's all about personal, it, it, you know, politics, personal power, all of that mm. kind of stuff. Now, it, it's funny, at that point, uh, the camera panned out to show Pelosi <laughs> sitting to Trump's left and, you know, of course, Smacking she was, her gun. Yeah, absolutely, exactly, exactly. <laughs> you know, she was just uh, seething inside. It was perfect timing. Um, the president went on to say, we, ha we have allies and we have enemies. Sometimes the allies are enemies, but we just don't know it. Again, you know, some yeah. sardonic humor there. Um, but he, he also went on to specifically, I think, blast Romney. He said, I don't like people who use their faith as justification for what they know is wrong. And that's exactly what Romney did, saying, oh, his, his religious convictions uh, were, were uh, motivating him to, to impeach. Yeah, it had nothing to do with the fact that he wasn't made 
State Secretary right. of State. Oh, no, 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 right, right, right. no. Virtue yes. and his, he's a po <laughs> profile in courage. Yes, yeah, profile yeah, exactly. And, courage. and Trump, right. Trump was honest. Yeah. He, he yeah. said that, you know, it's difficult for me. I'm getting used to this. It's difficult yeah. to, to love your enemies. Yeah. Yes, that, exactly. You know, the, the most, yeah. perhaps yeah. the most, yeah. uh, you know, challenging part of yeah. the Gospels. Yeah. But he, was, he was blasted by Father yeah. James Martin. He, uh, James yeah. Martin issued a tweet saying that he found the uh, speech uh, disgusting. That was his word, that it was self-aggrandizing and just uh, whatever. And it's like, uh, wait, are you talking about yourself, Father Martin? Right. I mean, yeah, yeah, he did get a little backlash even from some conservative critics saying he shouldn't have used the National Prayer Breakfast to sort of make it political. Um, but then other people have said, no, you Man. know, the gloves are off. Yes, that's Politeness right. is over. <laughs> Time for, you know, gloves are off. Call out their hypocrisy. You know, I, I mm -hmm. can see both sides of that. But, I mean, it just happened, the, you know, the couple days before the, the, the State of the Union and, and he's exonerated uh, by the Senate uh, for impeachment. How can you pretend that that didn't exist? The, the ripping up of the papers? Yeah. Of course he's going to mention it. Yeah, I mean, Trump is Trump, right? Yeah, he's going to mention that. No, but he's done a great deal in advancing mm. protecting religious liberty. Just oh um, gosh, one yeah. of his, his more recent things was protecting the conscience rights of healthcare workers, yes. you know, um, on the side of the little sisters of the poor, yes. you know, protecting faith-based uh, companies from having to cover contraception if it goes against their religious beliefs. But more recently, saying that, um, you know, family planning uh, groups or whatever th that don't do uh, abortions but receive federal grant money, N they do not have to now refer for abortions because they used to have to do that. They used to have to say, okay, we don't do abortions, do but it. here are some you know, clinics that do. They don't have to mm. do that anymore right. under this, right. under right. Trump. And of course, the church calls that cooperation with evil. Mm -hmm. You want to try to avoid that. Right, right. Yeah. Also, he is, uh, you know, he, him really helping uh, uh, come to the defense of, of uh, Christian business owners, small business owners, like uh, Jack Phillips, you know, the, the Colorado, uh, yeah. uh, you know, gay cake case, basically, mm -hmm. where very aggressive uh, LGBT activists trying to force Christian business owners into uh, doing things that their religious convictions will not allow you know right. servicing and, yeah yeah and like we said you know the stakes are really high in this election because mm -hmm. again there's not a single democratic candidate today no. who would not utterly crush mm -hmm. christians who don't go no along question. with their whole Absolutely. gay abortion everything uh, agenda donald trump is the dam that is keeping out the deluge at this moment in, in u.s history yeah absolutely that's why 2020 is so important yeah. Okay, it's a very safe bet, but we're going to be hearing much more about God and politics as the campaign 2020 rolls along. And when we come back, our person of the week, or is it people of the week? Well, you'll have to come back. We'll be right back. Don't go away. To become perfect, pray a rosary a day. Buy the weapon at churchmilitant.com. Again, in the all-new download, we dedicate each weekday to a specific theme, highlighting a story that fits that theme. Today's Friday, and it's time for... Person of the Week. As much as we'd love to give this honor to President Trump again after all his victories this week, this time it's going to go to the plaintiffs here in the Archdiocese of Detroit who are suing Archbishop Alan Vigneron and Monsignor Michael Bougarin, his Episcopal vicar, for fraud and intentional infliction of emotional distress. In their lawsuit, they lay out every detail of the injustices committed against Father Edward Perrone by Vigneron and also against them as prisoners of Assumption Grotto. Their contributions to the Catholic Services Appeal, it's an annual appeal that the Archdiocese puts out every year, they were used not for the, quote, ministries touching countless souls in Southeast Michigan, end quote, as the Archdiocese of Detroit's appeal statement promised, but rather to fund the, quote, sham investigation designed to remove and discredit Father Perone, close quote. The actions of Archbishop Vigneron and his cronies are despicable. And may God bless these prisoners for standing up for what's right. This is only the first of many hammers getting ready to fall in the AOD. May the good Lord's justice be meted out as he sees fit. This case is absolutely abhorrent. And, you know, we've been reporting on this. We've been all over the place reporting on this. Mm. But as you know, there's evidence that shows that they fabricated a rape charge against Brown. And this is not me editorializing. Right. Go to the court documents, go to the right transcripts. There. You can see it. They actually fabricated a sodomy charge. And we know this, the accuser, John Doe, yeah. he read our report on that. And it was because he read our report, Church Militant's report. He called up Monsignor Bougarin and chewed him out and said, I never told you I was sodomized. 
why would you go and tell the Archdiocese Review Board that he went? You know, I never told yeah. you that. It's such, so, such an injustice. It and, is. And there's yeah. more injustice going on with, with money that we think are going to ministries. Exactly. Where are they going, Steve? No, that's an excellent point. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I, 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 to underscore that point, you know, the, our money is going to fund this bogus, uh, you know, prosecution, uh, the, the legal defense of the, the Archdiocese. Even the therapist was funded by our contribution. The therapist to help the accuser uncover a repressed memory from 40 years ago that our, that uh, he was abused. Right, right. Yeah. That's our money. Yeah, absolutely. And mm. you know, Catholics need to cut off the cash because this is this kind of thing. It, it's not isolated to Detroit. It's going across uh, it, all across the country. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. It's ridiculous. Yeah. All right. Well, it's time for some viewer comments. In yesterday's Vortex, a political exorcism, Lynn said, God bless President Trump in his and our fight against the demonic. Michael, again, was correct in his predictions. Breitbart has the article today. Tax the rich. Pope Francis calls for global wealth redistribution. And Henry Patak comments, just change the logo of the Democratic Party from the jackass to the Baphomet and be done with it. <laughs> Baphomet is, of course, the demon whose statue is being trotted around the country by the Satanic Temple. And in response to another comment about Jesus demanding us to, quote, care for the godless, viewer Tom Kay said, it starts with prayer. Step number two is to hold a mirror up to their contorted faces and force them to look. As the old saying goes, a picture is worth a thousand words. I believe our president is doing a great job at that. Oh, well, I completely can they, agree. Yes. Can they use both? The jackass and Baphomet? <laughs> that would be correct. Yeah. I mean, why, why, you know, why one or the other yeah, for yeah. the Democratic no, Party? I, you know, I think that's why the average American loves Trump so much, is because he's just so, he's in your face, he's blunt, yeah. he's honest. Yeah, he can be kind of brash, sometimes a little bit crass. But, yes. you know, he, he's proud to say he's not a politician. Yes. Absolutely. You know, he's not he's not part of the establishment. He's a businessman. He's you know, he he so, says it and he acts it. Yeah. And <laughs> yeah. this is why the smug yeah. leftist elites hate him because yeah. he won't play their game. Right. Right. Yeah. The American people are so sick and fed up with the corruption, the swamp, uh, you know, that you of course you can tell when a politician is on television just so polished. But when they're just feeding you a line of bull, frankly, you know, and, and he he doesn't he. he and he, know, he, he doesn't actually he back. actually used that phrase. Oh, <laughs> is that right? Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> Not at the National Prayer uh, Breakfast, uh, but, uh, but right. at his comments afterwards on the reaction to the. He just came right out and said, "This yeah. is this has been BS," and he yeah. actually said that. Well, well, well they, <laughs> the Democratic Party, along with the mainstream media, for the past several decades, have been upholding this narrative, this constant narrative, polished. Uh, you know, that, that's, uh, you know, secular progressivism or whatever you want to call it is behind. Trump comes in and just, he's like a bull in a china shop. Yeah, really we, we've, we've had enough of this. Yeah, and right. the thing is, it, it resonates with so many it Americans. It resonates with but, so many Americans. But one person it does not resonate with is Pope Francis. Oh, that's <laughs> true. Because halfway across the world, while, while tr Trump is talking about religious liberty and all that stuff, mm. um, you've got Pope Francis at this um, conference put on by the Pontifical Council for um, Social Sciences talking about global wealth redistribution mm -hmm. and how tax cuts for the rich are part of the quote structures of yeah. sin yeah. and mm. things like that. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. Th and this is a conference where that featured uh, Jeffrey Sachs, a Harvard economist, radically pro-abortion uh, com for completely for population control measures. And you know, he came out and he, he slammed President Trump and he actually slammed the United States. He yeah. said, this has become a, you know, a, a nation of thuggery under uh, the Trump yeah. administration, you know, completely anti-American comments. And uh, uh, Bishop uh, Sarando, who was there, uh, just- uh, He's we, head of the Pontifical yes, Council. Yes, yes, absolutely. <laughs> They said uh, there were reports that said he was visibly delighted by that because you know, it just it just fits their their same narrative, yeah. the leftist socialist narrative. Yeah, Sarando is the same one who incredibly said that communist China huh. best yes. models the social doctrines of the church. Right. Really. Right. Yeah. Really. And yeah, and Jeffrey Sachs. I mean, he's. I don't know how many times he's been invited back to the Vatican. I mean, mm -hmm. he's been there multiple mm -hmm. times. But like you said, mm -hmm. he's pro-abortion, yep. pro-population control, um, and. and this is a man who actually warned people that if Trump is reelected, yeah. it will be, quote, completely dangerous mm -hmm. right, for the right. country. And he also serves as Pope Francis, uh, um, basically his counselor on sustainable development, which is just another euphemism yeah. for mm -hmm. the redistribution of wealth. The values yeah. are baffling. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. Yeah. All right, that's it for today. Thanks for joining us. Remember, everyone has access to the download for free until the end of next week. But after that, only our premium members will have access. So if you're not a premium member already, you can become one for only $10 a month. That's less than a cup of coffee a week and it helps us stay afloat. It helps us keep doing our good work, including investigations that you're not gonna get anywhere else. So that wraps us up for this week, but download will be right back 
right here on Monday. We hope to see you then. God bless you.